Hello, everybody. Woohoo! I'm planting tomatoes today. It feels so good to be able to be outside and plant tomatoes. So this is the area of my driveway. And I tore out two big tomato plants that were cherry tomatoes. And I just put these in, in its place. It's really simple. So this is going to be, I put two, what are these called? These are cherry tomato sun sugar. I have two of those, so they're in there. See them? And then over here, I have something called yellow pear. So I decided to put the yellow ones by the back door of the house in the driveway so that we could tell the yellow from the red because it would be obvious when they're done. I don't know. I, I just had no reason, but that's what I decided to do. So one of the things we found that works really well is that this catches so much sun the side of the house. So the sun hits the side of the house and then it keeps the tomatoes nice and warm and we have a beautiful effect of keeping tomatoes going all year round. So see the plants I just pulled out still had tomatoes on them, believe it or not, but they were st starting to get kind of ready. So I figured I'm tired of looking at this thing that looks like this. So we took all the tomatoes off we could and that was the end of that. Poor thing. It's only March. <laughs> it's still producing itsy bitsy tiny, tiny tomatoes. So over here, I'm going to have an early girl. And I have a Roma tomato. I don't grow them from seed. I just don't have the patience. And this is a big beef. And here's a champion. And this is a San Marin Marzano. San Mar Marzano. So they're all different kinds. Now I've I've grown in the past some really amazing uh, tomatoes right in the middle of where the trees are right now. And one of the ones I love, absolutely adore to grow, was called Caspian Pink. And they are a light pink. Well, they are kind of a dark pink color. And um, they are huge beefsteak kind of tomatoes. And they're just wonderful. But you can't really get them easily at the stores anymore. So you have to kind of go to um, have somebody grow them from seed or something like that. Part of the reason why I don't want to grow them on seed, grow from seed, is because you got to buy a package. So then you've got a package of... Um, seed of all the same variety and I don't want a variety I want a variety I don't want all the same so what I did now this is my large bed so I have a large medium and a small bed that we built in 2002 and when I took out the patio that was here there was a patio here this is all cement and brick when we took it out we put these big clumps of it in the bottom of the of the um, raised beds because we wanted to be able to not fill it so deep. And then also I was worried about gophers. And turns out we don't have gophers here on this side of town, but where I was raised, we had gophers. So. so what Mark and I did is, I don't know what I was thinking. I make lots of gardener's mistakes. I'm still learning what um, was happening is at some point in my life, I planted potatoes in here along with the tomatoes. And so we've had potatoes growing through everything and causing a mess for, for ages. So I took all the dirt out of here. It took me three days to get all the soil out of here. And I had some great compost with that I've been composting for years and putting them in here, worms and, and uh, eggshells and all sorts of stuff. I'd been putting them into these, these um, bins. And I took it all out and got rid of it. It was really, really painful to do that because it was such beautiful soil. But I wanted to get it all the way down to the bottom of the bin to try to keep the tomatoes out of, not tomatoes, potatoes out of there. Because you know how potatoes are. They're little itty bitty tiny things that like seed and then you're going to have them. So as far as I know, as far as I know, I think I got all the potatoes, all the dirt out of there. But we'll see. It might be a year or two before I notice. So I put oh, one, 23 cubic feet bags of uh, soil in here from the gardening soil. And then I went and I took some of my compost, all the compost I had that was ready, and I put it in here. And so I put these cages laying on top here because I have cats. They're outdoor cats, and so you got to keep them out of here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant the potatoes and uh, potatoes, tomatoes in here, and I'm going to try to, I'm going to crowd them up this year. I really want to crowd them up because since I'm not going to have potatoes, I, I think I could have a wall of tomatoes. That's, that's fine. I think I'm going to do that. So that's what I'm going to plan on doing today. Um, over in this area is where my compost is, as you can see. So I, I love to compost. I've been doing it since I was a little girl. My parents, my mom always compost and it, you get the most amazing, um, soil from it, you know, worms as well as, um, it's nice to see the, um, potato peelings and eggshells and all that go in there. It's, it's, it's just a nice feeling of seeing it happen. So I have done many videos turning my compost pile so you can see what I call black gold that comes out of there. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do today. Let's look and see how everything else is going. Mark planted sunflowers and corn <laughs> sometime in like November. And guess what? It's coming up. We're going to have a nice sunflower right here. Look at this one. They're all crumb coming up. And over here, this is a medium-sized bed. I guess I should turn out the dirt at all these, but I have it. It's just so much work. So this one is peppers, Brussels sprouts, and that kind of thing. And we planted this Brussels sprout last spring. And some of these peppers, too. We've, they've been here for so long. And I guess Mark isn't the big pepper eater that I thought he was. So they've not really been picked. And you can see I've got some forks in there. I'm telling you, cats are no fun. So you have to fill it with some stuff so that keeps them out of there. I like having outdoor cats, but then I don't like having outdoor cats. This little bin right here, I meant to really clean it out and take all the gunk out of here. You know, all the stuff. But look, spring came before I could do that. There was a tomato here, and I didn't want to pull the potato tomato out until I got until it stopped being a tomato. <laughs> plant and all these California poppies and look at the freesias. So I've tried to take all the freesias out, but you can't because they just are so small and you get some out, but not all of them. But it's beautiful, but you can see spring is here. Interesting fact that I've I've talked about before is that when I planted freesias years ago, they were all different colors, reds and bluesy purples and yellows and all kinds of stuff. But what happens is when you get uh, freesias together, and oh, they smell amazing, you guys. Just amazing. So when you get freesias together in a pile, then whenever they are the next generation, they all turn yellow because that is the dominant, I guess. So, uh, you know, anybody who has kids, if you can get a garden, I think this is a really interesting way to teach science. It's, it's it just, just that right there is that you plant all kinds of freesias of all different colors, white, purple, pinks and stuff. And then they all come back yellow. And talking to the children about genetics and how that happens is really an interesting, interesting uh, thought process. So uh, this is going to have a tomato in the middle of it. I'm playing. I'm putting one of the tomatoes there. Over here, I still have uh, my blackberries. I'd like to have blackberries like Janine Denoma has up in Oregon, but I don't have the space. Oh, look! You can see one right here. There's a blackberry. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see what that is like. Um, um, mm, delicious. Absolutely delicious. First blast blackberry of the year. I have some um, strawberries coming in. I really, really want to put a, make a planter. I might do it today. I've been wanting to do it for a very long time. And put, make a planter just for strawberries. Just, just that. And then that I could put a cover over the top of it to keep the birds out because you know that's what those bright red strawberries are attracting those birds another thing to teach teach children about about uh, birds and and why they're um red oh look here's some baby baby cherries tomatoes see them clean those puppies off pop them in my mouth mm -mm. there was a tomato plant right here All right in that bucket. Mmm. You guys are so juicy. So inside of that bucket, I think I'm going to put another plant. It's going to be another t tomato of some sort. Um, so I'd like to get rid of these strawberries, like I said, in some kind of way that I can grow them in, in a bigger area where they can mingle with each other, go wild, and get rid of these white plastic things. 
I have some onions. Here's an onion. I got to get some more onion seed. Um, oranges aren't doing so great because, I don't know, I have to have them in pots because I've never decided where to put them. You can see my California poppies. Still growing really well. Look at that. Gorgeous. Gosh, there was so much flavor in that. In that, uh, those two itsy bitsy tiny tomatoes. You cannot even imagine. So over here I have these flowers I planted a few weeks ago. If you guys were watching my videos, you can see I have a bird feeder here. And this is outside my office window so I can I can daydream and look outside. Uh, pink jasmine's coming along. That's going to smell amazing as well. I can't keep that small enough because it just takes over. I have made a path, a path, that uh, it, it hurts to have to take the... Um, California poppies back because I hate pulling them off but they just grow massive look at this and these are hens and chicks that are doing really well some art from Mark which, well it's not his art it is art he owns not art he made but I, I love seeing that in the garden see our little um, gremlin or I don't know what that is over there it's a ram thing I don't know I'm sure there's a name for it and columbine. Ooh, look, it's gonna get ready to bloom. Can you see that? Columbine. These are, I think, stalks. They've been blooming for a while. And look at my apricot tree, you guys, look. Look at this. I still haven't figured out a way of keeping these birds off of them once they get going. It's just a, a chore. I put metal, uh, like metallic stuff on there and it worked pretty well, but then I had the metallic things growing there I mean on the on the leaves and we just had uh it was just glittering all the time and it was constantly flashing inside the house and stuff here's my cherry tree you can see that we're starting to get buds on that and I uh, love these succulents they're just so pretty and let's see what else we got over here what else is happening in the backyard this is my plum tree one of my plum trees the plum all the plant all the trees out here are are, uh, have multiple um, varieties of plums, peaches, apricots, and cherries on them. So each limb has a different variety. So they so they come in like half a week, and then they start to fade out. And then the next week, there comes the next one. And my peach tree, which had peaches for the first time ever. And I think we've had this, we planted all the trees about six, seven years ago. So we're starting to get bubs, buds in there too. But... Um, I'm sure Adrian's watching, going, she's gonna give me a tour of her backyard again, of her of her plants. <laughs> where they where they will be whenever Calgary is completely snowless, which is probably now. I'm sure they've got their snow all gone. So anyway, this is a little tour of my backyard. I make these videos because I know you guys enjoy um seeing seeing what's going on. It's kind of fun. I like to look back on it and see how they're See how things have changed. There's a lot to work to be done out here. Obviously, listen to those birds. They're just freaking out. They're like, what are you doing in my backyard? Get out of my backyard. I want to eat some food off the feeders. That's what they're saying. They were having a fight today. There was like three or four of them. They're just fighting in this tree. They're just great. They're so awesome. <laughs> and this is, this is star jasmine. That it's really mostly in the summer that um, it blooms and it's incredible as well. So, all right, you all, I'll talk to you soon. Get out in nature if you can. We really need to be, need to get some sunshine if we can in our, in our uh, lives. Some nature, it's calming. No politics out here except maybe the birds, but I don't know what they're talking about. So that's cool. Take care, everybody. I'll see you soon. Stay healthy.